Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's episode, we are building this huge six by four foot acoustic diffuser and installing it at this really cool home studio. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step the entire build and installation process. So stay tuned while I walk you through this entire build. You can do it yourself as well. It is time consuming, but it's totally worth the effort. Please enjoy watching and subscribe for more studio building and home studio acoustics. Let's get right into it. So we are starting off with our lumber. We are using two by two by eight lumber. So our blocks are gonna be that size. So right now I'm setting up my stop block on my saw to make sure all of my cuts are gonna be nice and consistent. So I can just butt up my piece of wood against my stop block and I can do all of my cuts. So our first cuts are gonna be four inches and then consecutively three inches, two inches and one inch. Those are the sizes that make up this diffuser. And I will put a link in the description for the pattern to follow. Uh, there you can see all the four inch blocks cut and we're gonna get into cutting the three inch blocks now. So what I do is I just set up my stop block and I just keep referencing with my measuring tape to make sure that I'm getting a consistent three inch cut. And once we have that, we can go ahead and start sanding. So I have my friend Christian help me out here. He is gonna be sanding while I am cutting. I highly recommend you have a buddy help you out for this because this is the most time consuming part of the job is all of the prep work, all of the cutting and sanding. So while I'm cutting, Christian is sanding, and then I'm taking a break to sand as well. And it's just a whole lot of cutting and sanding <laughs> to build one of these diffusers. So I hope you're ready to have your hands be vibrating and just get ready for a lot of dust. And there you can see the stop block again, just a little close up shot. And we're cutting all the two inch blocks right now. And then we'll go ahead and cut the one inch blocks. There you can see it's set up for the one inch. Um, so it's important that you just keep cross-referencing, making sure your stop block isn't moving, using a strong clamp um, to make sure that your stop block stays exactly where it needs to be. There you can see the one inch pieces. And there's all of our pieces prepped. So I'll have rough calculations for how many pieces you'll need to do a diffuser of this size in the description. Here is the backing board that we're gonna be gluing to. This is three quarter inch ply. We picked up a four by eight sheet and I'm just cutting it down to six feet in length. And I left a couple extra inches after six feet just so that we can trim it down to final size. So now we have everything ready for the glue up. You're gonna need wood glue. I'm using a high initial tack wood glue. There you can see the pattern that we're gonna be following. I will put a link in the description um, for the pattern so you guys can follow along and build it yourself. And so anywhere it says zero, that just means that there's no block in that spot. So what I do is I like to use a four inch block just as like a spacer, and then I remove it. I don't glue it down whenever there's a zero in the pattern. So there you can see the very first row all glued up, and it's very important that this first row be nice and in line with that factory edge of the piece of plywood, because now all of the consecutive rows are gonna be pushed up against that row um, to line everything up. So I'm just using a long piece of scrap um, plywood that I cut on my table saw so I know that it's nice and straight. And I'm just using that as my straight edge to align all of the blocks as we go along and glue. So I'm, I'm having Christian set up the following row in the pattern so that way I can just take that pattern and glue it down, make sure it's nice and straight with the straight edge and just pressing down on each block to make sure it makes nice contact between the glue and the wood and the backing board. Especially since this is all end grain, you wanna make sure you use enough wood glue, um, but you don't need to be excessive. You don't want the glue pouring out the sides and getting into all the spots where there are no block. That way you have a nice clean backing board. And there you can see the diffuser all glued up. And you can see that edge that's overhanging on both the long and short side. So we just have to trim this down to the final size and I am using an electric planer to do this part. And I'm also using a circular saw for the larger side. Um, but there you can see, I'm just shaving it down until I get a nice flat edge. This is gonna make sure that when we build our frame, it fits nice and tight and square on the diffuser. So now that we have our diffuser trimmed to the final size, the client decided on a tongue oil finish. And here you can see how it looks when we apply it on. It just provides a nice, rich, uh, sealed look to the wood and uh, while still retaining that nice, natural wood tone. And then the client also decided on a nice uh, special walnut stain for the frame, which you'll see in a moment here. 
So we're just applying this with a brush and we're being nice and generous because that end grain really likes to soak up a lot of this oil and it will penetrate and seep into the wood and really give that wood a nice natural look. There you can see it's all dried, it's really soaked into the wood. Here's the wood that we are using for the frame. This is one by six by eight lumber. I'm just using knotty pine and I'm just going ahead and getting all my dimensions um, because I'm gonna basically cut this frame about a quarter inch proud, meaning bigger, of the dimensions of the diffuser. I'm only gonna nail it together with two nails to test fit. I'm using a 16 gauge nailer and two inch nails there. So I'm just gonna nail together my frame, making sure that my front face is nice and straight. And I'm only doing two nails because right now is just the very first test fit. And I make this a little bit bigger than it needs to be. That way I can go around and mark with my pencil um, the exact dimension that I need to trim down. Because if you cut these pieces too small, then you can't add wood on. Uh, so if you cut it a little bit big and you can trim down to the very final size, which I'm doing right now, I think that's the best way to make sure you get a nice tight fit. I always like to do the test fit just a little bit bigger so that I can go around all sides and mark off exactly where I need to cut and trim to get a nice perfect tight fit. There you can see the test fit looking beautiful. And so I'm gonna take that off of the diffuser there and just give it a quick sand just to get rid of any blade marks from the saw. There is the wood stain we are using. It is Special Walnut by Verithane. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply one solid coat, making sure that I get the inside, the outside, and that front face. Now the back face isn't um, essential to get. I actually left that blank just so that I know that the side that's stained is the very front face. And I also wrote on the back, just rear, just to make sure that we know what the top and bottom side is. So now we're gonna build our mount. That is a two by six by eight piece of lumber. And you can see I set my table saw on a 45 degree angle. And what we're building right here is called a French cleat. So essentially what we're doing is making those two 45 degree cuts and those are gonna lock into each other. So one side is gonna screw into the diffuser, one side is gonna screw into the wall. So here is the client's home studio. This is a really cool detached home studio slash office. Really cool setup that this client has here. Has been a really fun build. Stay tuned for the rest of the things we did in the studio. We did some custom base traps and our previous video that we posted is those ceiling clouds that you can see right now. So right now what we're doing is Christian and I are marking out where this mount needs to get mounted onto the diffuser. And you can see I have X's mounted on certain rows right there. So what I did was I had Christian mark out and let me know which rows had a one inch block or no block at all in the spots where we're gonna be drilling. Because we are using three inch construction screws. So you can see that those screws are actually gonna protrude past the backing board. So I wanna make sure that wherever I'm screwing this French cleat into the diffuser, that I am not screwing in a place where there is either no block or a one inch block because then the screw will go through the diffuser and you'll be able to see it from the front side. So we don't want any of that, so that's why we are marking out which rows have a one or no block, and then we are just marking an X on there so I know not to put a screw in there. And then I'm just putting a small two by four spacer at the bottom just so that the diffuser sits at that same distance away from the wall, top and bottom. And now we are just prepping out where this mount needs to get mounted on the rear wall. So the client has a couch going in here, which you'll see in a minute, and he has that HVAC right above. So we ended up doing about a two inch gap off of the HVAC and you're just gonna measure from the bottom of the cleat to the top of the diffuser to know your distance. So here I'm just doing a hang test just to make sure that that French cleat is nice and strong. We ended up hitting five studs and we did two or three screws per stud so this French cleat is rock solid. Given that this diffuser is very heavy, you wanna make sure that your French cleat is rock solid. You do not want this falling down. It is very, very heavy, but we make sure that for our clients, everything is nice and safe and strong enough to hold me. So <laughs> there you go. So it just lifts right on to the French cleat and then the frame just simply slides on and that frame hides the French cleat mount, sits nice and flush against the wall. And here you can see the finished product, how beautiful this all turned out. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Enjoy some finished beauty shots of this beautiful diffuser in this really cool home, st home studio. I really hope you guys try this project for yourself. It is very time consuming, but super, super rewarding. And you will enjoy the acoustic benefits as well as the aesthetic benefits. 
This has been Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. Please like, share, subscribe, all of that great stuff. I really appreciate everyone who watches this channel and comes back week over week, seeing all of the cool projects that I get to do. I'm so grateful to be able to do this for a living and being able to share it with everyone just is the icing on top. It's super cool. So really appreciate it. This has been Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. Peace out.